Today's episode is brought to you by Dilly Company. Are you looking for some cool, comfy, pickleball gear and clothes for everyone? Dilly Company. Check out today's episode for a special promo code. Welcome to Don't Make Me Come Back There. We are a funny podcast about family. My name is Dustin Nickerson. I'm a stand-up comedian and the host of the aforementioned podcast. And alongside mm-hmm. me in our mm-hmm. steady there recording studio uh, above Public Square Coffee in downtown La Mesa, California, is my lovely wife, CFO, um, the pride of Manhattan, Kansas. The other Manhattan. Yeah, Melissa yes. Nickerson. Mm-hmm. Uh, with us as well, our producer, Andy Lara. Bam, Welcome, bam, everybody. Bam, bam. Backstreet's back. All right. Boom, ba dum boom, boom. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. How did that get um, listed as a Halloween song? You know, Backstreet Back, I think it's because there was like a zombie video. Yeah, I think the, the video, music video is very, mm, yeah. It's uh, They're like puppets. Oh, no, that was that's, that's bye bye bye. Oh, you're right. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right. They're you're like right. uh, uh, bye, puppets bye, of the bye, industry. Bye, Am I right? There's, <laughs> there's nods at the Thriller dance in the Backstreet Boys dance in that song. Oh, okay. So there's like a it's like a zombie oh. like kind of. Everybody yeah. comes. It's Halloween in your neighborhood. <laughs> bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. <laughs> Ghouls and goblins, costumes of kids. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. It's so funny. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Spook your body. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Full moon out uh, tonight. Oh. <laughs> How does this? Back street, back Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> we had kind of wrapped that segment. Yeah, I know. I just had to keep going. That's Halloween. good. Hey, do you need to send a text, Mel? What are you doing? I- I got our Patreon Zoom date. I got oh, it out. Get to the oh, thing. We're, we're riffing and raffing right now. Riff raff. <laughs> Couple of riff raff here. Um, what Halloween. Mel? What's the Patreon date? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's funny that that got categorized as a uh, as a uh, Halloween song. Is all I'm saying. Uh, mm. If you're a regular backseater, you know already. This is a two episode day. You can tell mm-hmm. from the energy. Yep. You can uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know Mel's twitchy. Yep. <laughs> I'm just going to say yep a bunch yeah. in different ways. Uh-huh. Yuppers. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're here. We got a lot to talk about, though, because the one main thing we have not done is recap show week. Mm-hmm. We are mm-hmm. not my show. Mm-hmm. Annie. Annie came to town. Our little yep. daughter was an orphan mm-hmm. for four days, really for the last few months. And uh, we have a lot to recap. This was my first real immersive experience into the theater community and uh so we've got lots to discuss on that before we get there um we have a you know a uh you know a little uh, we got a patreon we we really like our patrons kind of the best mm-hmm. of the best the mm-hmm. deepest fans that we have are our patrons where you just give a little more to the pod and all things dustin nickerson comedy and you get a little more in return it's a deal in that way you know it's an exchange mm-hmm. uh and uh what are, what are some of the things you get we get the we monthly get, go ahead uh patrons get vip meet and greet meet and greet shows mm-hmm. they get exclusive merch um merch discount uh-huh. we do um they get the video episode a day before everybody else they're the only people that get mm-hmm. the behind the scenes the weekly bts mm-hmm. that we have right there also you get a uh, a free mm-hmm. cameo a year this is depending on what level yeah, you're at monthly zoom uh meeting yeah uh, let me do the zoom ca- hang there let we me go do the cameo real quick uh this is uh the speaking of which so i just got this email right here this is from okay. eric mm-hmm. see you in raleigh eric is a uh patron my wife and I are so excited to see you in Raleigh November. Thank you again for the cameo video. Uh, so what it was is he has a friend who recently bought a house here where we live. Oh, yeah. Ew, mm-hmm. And, uh, I and so I did a video one. for him. Mm-hmm. And he said apparently his two-year-old thought it was him. Nailed it. Uh, so this was the text thread that they sent me here. Uh, this was the be- uh, da, 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 da. So I sent the cameo right there. Clearly on the road. And this this is the guy who got it. Holy crap, that's amazing. And Ezra, their, their kiddo, yelled, Papa, when this video was played. He thought it was me. And we're already planning on going to Public Square this morning. So there you go. I don't know if we're going to see it's him. It's a lot of overlap. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You're a new father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he Lovely. said, welcome to the neighborhood. 
my guy. If you see your twin, give him a super joke because this guy also kind of looks like me. So, you know, this is the thing. Uh, and then the last one. Yes. Have you guys watched the holdovers yet? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm creeping on a text thread. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this it's is, a lot uh, of screenshots. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very funny. Um, that is so funny. Yeah. So the, oh, one yeah. of the things that people like to do the cameos for uh, for our Patreon is give them to other people. So there you go. Something to keep yeah, in mind. Yeah, you know. And holidays what, are coming. Uh, Father's Day, Mother's uh, Day. Yeah. Weddings. Fourth of July. Send <laughs> it to your, like your most American loving <laughs> friend. Hell yeah. Uh, Memorial Day. Yes. <laughs> so good. So keep that Ooh. in mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> September 11th. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Dude, I, whoa, <laughs> whoa, uh, uh, Mel, Mel, ah, you up. see how he was borderline there? I know. just take it out. No, it stays. Ah, <laughs> I crossed the line. Dude, stop. You're dead. <laughs> now, uh, when's uh. the Patreon Zoom? <laughs> Yeah. One of the funds we do is a monthly hang with all of our patrons, regardless mm-hmm. of your level of patron. And that is on Sunday, April 28th. Sunday, April 28th, mm-hmm. 428. Uh, you're going to get on there. We're going to, there's going to be some laughs. There's going to yep. be some uh, icebreakers, probably. Yeah. Fun facts. Mm-hmm. Everyone mm-hmm. share a fun fact about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go alphabetically. Uh huh. Yeah. Everyone be prepared to list to name your favorite plant. Um, not have, count- a, have a prepared haiku. Not counting trees. Favorite plant. Not counting a tree. Go. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell on April 28th. Ooh, little teaser there, yeah. huh? Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, tune it. You better sign it for Patreon now <laughs> to find out what your non. What Well's favorite non-tree plant is? Oh my gosh, Are you serious? What's the difference between a tree and a plant? I suppose just size, mostly, right? You know. I mean, a tree is a plant. Yeah, but but you wouldn't put a if there's a tree, you don't put a tree. I mean, you might put a bonsai tree in your house. Oh, you right? mean like a potted plant? Yeah. What's the yeah. difference between a tree and a plant? Root system. I don't know. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. Is this I mean, um, a difference of fruit, trunks? Fruit? Difference probably of trunks? trees probably I think are more have a trunk system where plants okay. are not truncated. I don't know if that's okay. the right word. Truncated, yeah. Truncated. <laughs> I'm glad I, I'm actually I'm gonna be honest right now. I'm really glad that I asked this and you guys didn't call me stupid like a couple weeks ago when I couldn't remember where, where land came from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, Oh yeah, the plates. They pushed that up from the bottom <laughs> of the ocean. It just took me a while to get there. But I mean, I think there's a fair discussion about what where, what's a plant and what's a tree. Yeah, you know, palm trees are part of the grass family, actually. So palm trees are technically oh, grass. Oh, interesting. So you know, so that's an interesting one because the mm. I think it's it's got to be the trunk, right? Because plants don't have a singular. It's the singular trunk, right? Of a, but some trees have multiple little trunks, right? Kind of like they'll stem off of, or maybe. Mm-hmm. A, a banyan tree will actually root off its branches right. down, which is really special. There you go. Mel, kick in. Mm-hmm. What do you need? What, nope. What, <laughs> what, you, don't want to, you don't feel I don't have anything to add to this discussion. I I don't know. It can't be I size. I don't know, Dustin. It can't be size because, uh, yeah. because a bonsai tree is a tree by definition, right? Correct. What, what makes a tree a tree? Yeah. Um, a tree or a plant. I said fruit. I think trees have fruit. Not all trees have fruit, yeah, though. A, yeah, but a blueberry plants. bush is definitely a plant. Yeah, oh, black ba- a blackberry. Oh, and no. what's the difference between a? Now we threw a bush in ah! here. What's a plant versus a bush versus a tree? I got nothing. Shoot us emails that don't make me come back there. <laughs> gmail dot com. Could we look this up? Of course, we could look this up. Um, but uh, I'd rather hear your guys' thoughts and also get on on that Facebook group, which we did not plug last time. Facebook okay. group us, baby. Yeah. Dustin Nickerson comedy fans. This is a, this is hot content right now. Here. Do you want to plug your dates, your tour dates? Fine, fine, fine. Uh, Syracuse. Thanks for coming out last weekend. I hope you were good. I don't know that you were, but I hope that you were. I think you were. I know mm-hmm. Claude was good. Claude's a good fan. Remember Claude yeah. from oh, yeah. last week? Mm-hmm. 
Claude, thanks for the uh, hash brown Rex at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Shout out, Claude. And those comic book stores. Oh, yep. yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, this weekend, I'm back on the East Coast. I never came back. I did, actually. In Rutherford, New Jersey, at the mm-hmm. uh, Hotel Renaissance, I think, is the uh, where the club is. It's a room. Okay. We'll be out there. Then we're in L.A. in May and Cheyenne and Fort Collins, uh, Des Moines. And then we go into June. Where I'm going to be in Naples, Tampa, Dana Beach. Everything after that is just July and beyond. We've got Rosemont, Chicago, Huntsville, Nashville, Fort Wayne, Louisville, Atlanta, Charleston, Asheville, Charlotte, Omaha, Houston, Addison, Tacoma, Milwaukee, Appleton, Wisconsin, Salt Lake City, Raleigh, North Carolina, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and Spokane, Washington. Mm-hmm. DustinNickerson.com slash tour. Yeah. All right. A lot of dates. Uh, lot all of dates. right. Boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom. So anyways, um, Melissa, when yeah. we grew up, mm-hmm. theater kids were made fun of. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I get that. Their mm-hmm. theater kids were always this just sub like culture group in school <laughs> that no one understood accept each other and they were always close Mm -hmm. and they were Mm -hmm. for lack of a better word weird but that weird that word doesn't mean what it used to be it just meant they weren't mainstream they weren't mainstream cool but what about like the band same thing with band band was its own thing Mm -hmm. they were all close because the 90s were a turning point but still when we grew up still sports popularity Mm -hmm. asb Mm -hmm. Quarterback. Like, they were yeah. kind of like mm-hmm. main, the mainstream cool kids. Mm-hmm. I think the turning point for theater kids to stop getting beaten up or stop getting bullied was Glee. Well, that was show choir, but um, it's the same thing. No, they weren't acting; they were performing songs. But, okay, but I'll, I will, um, I will give you that for sure. Well. Um, well, that's the weird thing is um, theater kids can always be like super weird, outgoing, yeah, like kind of just like loosey goosey, yeah. Um, and but then some of them go go to Hollywood. And, well, that's exactly it. one know, of my favorite things about get my, fame. Yes, yes. Well, that's just it. One of my favorite things about where society right now is at mm-hmm. is a full acceptance of how awesome theater kids are. Theater kids, show tunes. You're like Listen, Broadway. Yeah, you're your mm-hmm. own little community. Are you tough to have a conversation with? Sure. <laughs> Do you know so many songs that I don't know and that I didn't even know existed? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But you're rad. Like, you you have a gift. You're very yeah. good. And mm-hmm. I get it because we have a kid in theater now. And I was like, this is cool. This is fun. Like, this is a, a subculture and it's a place where kids are accepted mm-hmm. and close. It's kind of its own little, like, high school, like, in one little group, though, because you still have, like, populars and leads. But yeah. one of the nice things mm-hmm. about theater, it's like all, like, the ages can merge, you know? So you can yeah. have, like, like an eighth grader being chill to a fourth grader. Yeah, this theater group is like eight to 14 year olds, mm-hmm. which is, if you think about it, um, I don't know why I was thinking about this, but I lived in Texas from half of fourth grade to half of eighth grade. Right. Which is like that segment. And, you know, you go through puberty and like yeah. so much changes mm-hmm. in the matter of like four or five years. Um, so. So, like, they're able to kind of bring the fourth and fifth graders under their yeah. wings. Um, and then it's so interesting because, like, some of the kids are just crazy outgoing. Right, right. And then some of them are super introverted. Mm-hmm. But then they, like, own it on stage. A hundred percent, yeah. You know? And some of them are exactly the same person on and off stage. Yes. Like, in their line delivery mm-hmm. and commanding a room and and then sometimes it's it's opposite so it's it's actually just really fun to kind of see how they shine and pull it off right and it all comes together yeah yeah i think you know what it is is i think being an adult is just realizing that you and or like you were we were wrong to look down on theater kids (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we were wrong. That was our own insecurity. Well, I do think a lot of adulthood is 
what if you work 40 hours you commute you only get like three or four hours to like consume yeah uh, a movie or a TV show or a podcast you know in a, a day or a week yeah and you're watching the theater kids well being an adult is you know? is, is going oh man I'd love to be in a play <laughs> <laughs> that seems fun or like I'd love to have to, to, I'd, I'd to love be in to a have band the, I'd love to have choir. the time to learn a little number. Yeah, like the um, get a little outfit, get the harmonies together. Yeah. You know, a little choreo. Well, yeah. you say that to our mm-hmm. kids all the time. Like, you're never gonna have as much structured exercise as you do right now in your life. Yeah. So when we were going to the Red Rocks last week, um, everyone didn't want to go, and but we had the reservation. We got the car out. We're going. We brought you know the right footwear. It was raining. And I and I I'm sure nobody heard me, but I said, when you grow up, you don't have like a volleyball league that your parents drive right, you to, right. and that you pay, and you have a, uniforms and a, you know mm-hmm. a schedule, a practice schedule, a tournament schedule. Like, right, you have to find your own way to exercise. Yep, and you don't want to do it. Like, you get in your fitness clothes, you get your shoes on, you don't want to go. Yeah, you've had. But you have a plan yeah. and you go. Yeah. And then when you start walking around and you park, you're like, okay, I'm glad I did this. I'm I glad feel I did this. Yeah. Like I moved and I didn't want yeah. it, but I did. And that's adulthood. Well, yeah. <laughs> it is adulthood. And also, like, it's. And I'm grateful for this opportunity I created for myself. Right. I mean, <laughs> and I tried to get out of 10 times. Yeah. Well, it also being in a relationship, like, when you throw a family into that mix too, you're like, I'm going to go mm-hmm. exercise right now. And your spouse is like, the hell you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're going to start the laundry while yeah. I make dinner. Yeah. Oh, you're going to go down to the gym? Adorable. <laughs> if you oh, and want... then you're going to try and come home and shower? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so I guess I'll just do all the stuff for the next hour and a half. You go lift while I do the heavy lifting to keep this yes. family afloat. Our- our kids each were at a sport at five o'clock yesterday. Yes. And we were cooking dinner and driving them and doing laundry. And then you were like, we should walk. Let's yeah. go on like a 8 p.m. walk. And I was like, no, because I got to shower and do all this laundry. And right. Like I've foregone yes. movement yes. today. This is the argument. Yes. I have three, foregone movement. Because I have three children. Yes. And they get, they're going to move. Yeah. So they can go to sleep, mm-hmm. and then I can lay in bed and not sleep. Yeah, and I'm doing it all for them. This is the you argument. <laughs> this is the argument that I try and make to non-parents a lot of going. I don't think that you are a better person or a worse person for having kids, but I am a busier person than you can ever imagine. I know that because we have phrases like "shower window" mm-hmm. or "exercise window," like. If you do not shower and or exercise during this time, this window of opportunity, you will not today. You yep. have mm-hmm. eight minutes to poop. That's what you have. <laughs> and it will get interrupted. Uh, something will get slid under that door, a note, <laughs> a, uh, a task. You're going to get a text because everyone knows you're on your phone in there. There's just, there's a busyness that you can't really comprehend until Mm -hmm. you're in it now as a parent it does subtly get busier so it does um Mm -hmm. slowly get busier like when you have a newborn you're Mm -hmm. exhausted but you're not as busy as you will be as you get more kids and they get older the task i show so um we're at the laugh factory last week yeah and i'm telling uh i'm telling uh aaron 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 weber and nate craig uh, Aaron, yeah. both of those guys, married guys with a baby on the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew about Aaron. But yeah, Nate's got Nate. a baby on awesome. the way, too. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I go, hey, I'm going to be in July in, let's look at our calendars. July in Nashville. July in Nashville. Yeah. Can you do the yeah. date? And look uh-huh. at the calendars. And for context here, <laughs> uh, uh, I pull up. I was like, let me pull up to July. And I show him this. <laughs> This is what my this uh-huh. is this is what yeah. our family calendar looks like in July. Yes. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. our my friend without kids audibly gasped. <laughs> yes. He took mm-hmm. multiple lords names in vain. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't 
And he's like, I thought my calendar was full. And he goes, what is that? And I'll go, I'll Mm -hmm. just read a couple of them to you right here. Yeah. The purple are my dates. Those are, those Mm -hmm. are work things. Yeah. The 15th, I have a haircut. (laughs) And he goes, excuse me? I go, yes, my haircut is scheduled for July 15th. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Where's a uh, we have uh, on the eighth we've got White Dragon uh, uh, Martial Kung Fu. Arts. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday we've got some work here. Um, on July eleventh, uh, our our daughter's uh, Nintendo Switch annual renewal happens, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you have to change the backroom cat litter pad because that's yep. a weekly one that's on there. Mm-hmm. It's just they can't. You can't even imagine it until you're in it. It, I know, it, and it, we're looking at April, May, June, which is um, scary. Yeah. I'm looking at April yeah. of next year already. Oh, yeah. 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 That's not an exaggeration. No. Um, because you're looking at, so, like, I feel mm-hmm. bad for sometimes my reps. of They're like, how's your November? I'm like, well, I don't know because the cross-country schedule's not out yet. Yeah, and I've been, like, I have been deep diving on the California CIF website. Mm-hmm. I'm like, give me a date for for a conference. Yeah. There's five Saturdays in November. Yeah. I need to know which day it's on. The average yeah. family of four mm-hmm. plans a year further out than the federal government. <laughs> we are so beyond what you are even mm-hmm. here. We're mm-hmm. we're in 2025. I don't even Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't I have no questions about today, tomorrow. <laughs> I know this is all cooking. What I'm wondering is mm-hmm. where are we going to vacation in July 2028? That's where about <laughs> and I'm like is the school schedule going to change? It's just it, you can't even imagine how busy we are. Melissa, I am so excited about our new sponsor, Dilly Co. Because I've been trying to get you to play pickleball for decades. This is not an exaggeration. And now you're willing to play in part because of Dilly Co. They yeah. make such great gear. You're wearing it right now. What do you like about their gear, Mel? Um, it's comfortable. Mm, very. I'm. It's... I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm, so comfortable right now. I love it so much. It's a good fit. Yeah, it's a good fit. It's good for everyone, mm-hmm. um, young and old. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm ready. I, it is very I'm comfortable. Ho- so which I'm gonna do something I'm uncomfortable doing. Great. And I'm gonna give it a go. And the gear helps. It is very hard to make. Uh, pickleball or really any sport like gear that is good for everybody like all levels of skill ability body type comfort level on the court and Dilly Co has done it all yeah, this stuff is great gear. yeah it's great, great gear. gear they've got uh, shirts they've got uh, some of their gears really great I really like their paddles mm-hmm. uh, specifically I like the paddles because they're like again they're accessible they're great paddles like they're officially pickleball approved but they're not like too much you don't want to be the person doing too much on the court. So if you guys go check out their website, thedillyco.com, and you use promo code BACKSEATER, you're going to get 10% off your entire order. So check it out. Go check out all their great gear, and we will see you on the court. That's right. In your Dillyco gear. Dillyco! Dillyco. Dillyco. It's fun to say. It's very fun to say. Yeah, I don't it's remember crazy. how we got on this subject mm-hmm. originally, but. Um, well, I think it's, I think when you have a baby, you're like, or when you get married or you have a partner, you're yeah. like, Okay, so they have their sleep schedule and their work schedule and their right. eating and you right. know like exercise. Yeah. So you have another schedule that you're in needs that mm-hmm. you're bouncing off of instead of just being like I'm hungry right now. Yeah. I want to watch the show, you know. Yes. Um so that happens when you're with roommates or partner. Yeah. And then you add a baby and those needs come first. Right. Because right. they're the youngest yes. and um the, the most, most needy. fragile. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then you had pets, and yeah. you had more children, and... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see mm-hmm. that you're tired right now, and that's cute, but if you take a nap right now, your baby's going to crawl into the laundry chute. <laughs> <laughs> well... So, you know, count the cost. So, like, our 14-year-old is up watching The Matrix last night. Yeah. Because she's on spring break. Yeah. In the living room. And it was Terminator, but she switched okay. last second. Yeah. Um. So we're like, turn the volume T-t-t-t. down. We are cranking our noise machine. Yes. Um. Because we have to get up. Yeah. And we're coming off this trip and yeah. spring break. And um. So, so like, no one's asleep mm-hmm. really. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think you were asleep, and I think Claire, our one with like, the schedule still, yeah. is asleep. But everyone else is just up 
and um, yeah. it's just the way it is. It's a lot. Yep. Are you guys a white mm-hmm. noise family? Like the, you guys use that? Uh, yeah, we just turned the TV up really loud. So yeah, I no, I that's a uh, there's a uh, I think there's a generational gap, and that like yeah. millennials mm-hmm. listen to white noise, and yeah. then our youngers do, you know, Gen Z, Gen Z does, and yeah. then our parents don't, but our grandparents do. Yeah, it's called the TV. No, well specifically, <laughs> it's called Fox News. <laughs> Fox News was the OG white new no- white noise, <laughs> just fall asleep to. Uh, you know, Biden. You know, rah, 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 it is rah, rah, funny rah, rah. how as these much, immigrants are taking the jobs. Oh, I'll sleep well on that. OK. It is funny how much like Gen Z and millennials, you know, everyone's like, get off your phones, you know. And then we are like, yeah, but the TV was on 24 all the time. Never not watching TV um, constantly in the sense that you're like passive screen time has always existed. Mm-hmm. I mean, ever since, you know. The technology was there. Yeah, my, it, my, we're not the first generation to have screens on. Yeah. It's my just Monday a different nights was screen. just Happy Gilmore on VHS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I should I legitimately turn that on and fall asleep yeah. like all the time. Oh, yeah. TV is so mm-hmm. foreign to our kids now that like if I just like you were put watching on, some baseball. I, I put on, you know, yesterday, well, I, I, yesterday I watched the fi- the semifinal for the um, final four for the women's K- uh, Iowa versus LSU. And then I put the Mariners game on. TV is so foreign to our children that when they walk on, they're like, "What's going on? Why is a show on? Yeah, why is where's the sound effects? Why is this is something engage me? Something needs to. <laughs> I need an effect to come across the screen. You know, like every thirty seconds or eight seconds. Or where do I'm I gonna, swipe? Where's the cuts? Where's yeah. the cuts? I need some cuts here. So where do I swipe? <laughs> well, I thought it was funny because uh, it's the MLB, right? MLB yeah. never. They had a bunch of like in-house ads. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, huh. They do the hat trick, <laughs> you know, which is fun. Yeah. Um, but the uh, this is this is a um, this is my belief level on the Seattle Mariners right now. I was like, well, I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna sign up, you know, for MLB so I can watch the games. But I'm not gonna pay for the year up front. Like, let's <laughs> just I'll, start. I'm gonna go month to month until July. And then see where we're at. Maybe after then, if there's a deal for the rest of the year. But I'd, I'd like to see our standings post All Star break. Mm-hmm. You know, before I uh, I make a full commitment to them. But anyways, we're not talking about sports. We're talking about theater. That's where we're supposed to be today. Okay. Uh, I mm-hmm. like. We are really this this where we live right here. We have a thing called Peter Pan Junior Theater, mm-hmm. and they're able to perform an unbelievably high-end production and it's at our old place of work the range owned uh croc core can be funny i've worked there forever the croc center it's a salvation yeah. army croc mm-hmm, center mm-hmm. and it's like this crazy nice day that was built with Theater. mcdonald's money yep mm-hmm. and so they perform there so the sets are great and then the directors are incredible it's, it's, it's like they play uh, with like a live orchestra yeah and you know it, it's, so it's so well done it's eight shows in one week eight There's... shows in one week i've never related to my daughter more <laughs> Yeah. Or her two show mm-hmm. days. I'm like, yeah, pace yourself, girl. She's got a, but yeah. they like, they miss a week of school because they on have show week. dress rehearsal. They, they rehearse Monday. They rehearse 13 hours. Tuesday, they start doing the dress rehearsals. They have show makeup. All the local schools come make and do field trips to go see them. There's two shows yep. a day. There's a matinee mm-hmm. and an evening show. Yeah. And it's so good. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's quite the experience. Um, they have to take care of their costumes. They have to put everything away. There's no screens in the green room. Yeah. So they're playing cards like for like 20 hours of that week. Yeah. Um, waiting for their call times and mm-hmm. their everything. But yeah. um, it's like 20 drop offs and pickups at very specific times. A lot of volunteers going in and out. Mel had a volunteer yeah. thing in the in the. Mm-hmm. Um, I did two green room two shifts green and rooms. then I ushered. And I brought her some yeah. coffee and a pastry once, and people. Yeah, I got in trouble for going backstage. Yeah. Excuse mm-hmm. me. And I was like, oh, I'm just <laughs> surprising my wife with a little treat, and you're like, I can't have this back here. Well, I had the headset. <laughs> yeah. I had the headset, so. I had to ring and the bell. And people were really surprised that Melissa knew so much about Annie. Because Melissa was Annie. Hannigan and, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. Warbucks. And, Warbucks. Uh, orphans. Well, you've yep. washed it all out, mm-hmm. you know. What do yeah. you know about the play Annie? So, oh, me, not enough. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Nope. 
That's all right. Okay. Um, let me. Mm-hmm. So, if can I plot review uh, of Annie? If you don't know the sure. story of Annie, mm-hmm. Annie's a young sassy orphan. Yeah. Charming sassy orphan, mm-hmm. staying in an orphanage. She has a lot of hope. She's mm-hmm. uh, the one redhead, you know, mm-hmm. for contrast standpoint. So you know who the lead is. And uh, she's eleven. She's eleven. Mm-hmm. She's staying in this orphanage with Miss Hannigan. Mm-hmm. A real, you know, classic mean orphanage type character who's also pretty funny in the show. Yeah. Um, and Annie believes that her real parents are still alive. This is also the plot of Joe Dirt, um, now that I say it out <laughs> loud. <laughs> Which I think Annie was written in first. Yeah, yes. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because she has half a locket. She was dropped off at the orphanage by her parents yeah, with a, a half baby. a half mm-hmm. locket around mm-hmm. saying, we'll come back and get you. Mm-hmm. And a note. There's a note. It's set during the Depression. Yes. Annie was a the real, Great Depression. real um, comic strip and radio show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the and, 30s. Exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so uh, Annie's got a lot of hope and she's the classic orphan who's not doesn't want to be an orphan. She's not accepting who she is. I uh, know I'm different. My parents are going to come get me again. <laughs> full Joe Dirt. Uh, <laughs> and he uh, uh, she. <laughs> what? Uh, she. No, it was a Joe Dirt. I was thinking about Joe Dirt. I was thinking about sure. how good Dennis Miller is in Joe Dirt. He's the radio DJ. Oh, yeah. He's so good. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Annie tries to get out of the orphanage a couple times. Uh, she ends up on the mean streets of New York. This is all set in New York at one point. She gets in. She gets caught. She finds a dog. She, you know, it's all it's just all kind of filler. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Insert staunch Republican and billionaire Daddy Warbucks. What's his real name again? Oliver Warbucks. Oliver Warbucks. Mm-hmm. Oliver Warbucks uh, decides he's gonna have an orphan for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Bring him, bring an orphan, which is not so problematic. It's so problematic <laughs> for so many reasons. But mm-hmm. in this, uh, you know, in this story, it's very wholesome. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have an orphan. Uh, was it a press thing, or he just wanted to be nice? Yeah, no, it was definitely a press thing. A press thing. Mm-hmm. Let me yeah. show an image kind of thing. Let me yeah. remind this orphan how bad they have it. By uh, showing them how good they could have it for two weeks during Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now, sassy, charming little uh, Annie just charms the pants off of Daddy Warbucks. They go to a city uh, show at Radio City. She falls asleep. First movie. The first movie. Mm -hmm. She's singing. She. uh, How does she end up with the president again? How does that happen? (laughs) She's in the president's cabinet. She ends up in front of the president's Warbucks. cabinet for, yeah. with Warbucks because Warbucks mm-hmm. is a highfalutin mm-hmm. billionaire type. He's got calls to Teddy Roosevelt. He's helping yeah. them, blah, blah, blah. She ends up singing some song about optimism tomorrow. in front of yep. <laughs> tomorrow, uh, in front of Warbucks. And now she's charmed the president and his whole cabinet. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. quite a story. Real, It's got four scump so, vibes now, you know. So then. Um, Daddy Warbucks is like, hey, I'll, I'll go ahead and adopt I'm you. I'm going to adopt you. And she goes, I can't be adopted because my, my parents, parents are going to come note. get me. And then. So he sends out a nationwide search to find. Annie's parents. Annie's parents. Mm-hmm. The president's helping. Everyone's mm-hmm. trying. Now, a bunch of people want the 50 grand or. The d- yeah. There's, the there's a check. There's a reward. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. The reward money. Y- you know, uh, people try and steal. They, and then they because some people come close. The, mm-hmm. To do it, they they Hannigan and her brother, they come up with some plot to uh, pretend to be so and so and get the remaining half locket. Of course, they mm-hmm. were fake. They only find out they're fake because the freaking president's involved in the CIA, and it's a whole <laughs> t- like it's crazy. And uh, yep. and then the president comes up with the New Deal. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Daddy Warbucks inspires the New Deal, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, of course. The is and saved. then Warbucks mm-hmm. adopts the whole orphanage. Right at the end. Yeah, I think it. I don't know if there's a line in there, but it's implied. Yeah, it it's seems implied. Like they that- all kind of come back, right? Yeah, I think they're in because the movies are different. Yeah. Um, in the play, Hannigan is sent away, you know, um, for conspiring. Right. You know, and so there's there's a a bit of like you guys all got 
you know, a new a new dad. Yeah. You got a dad. It's very yeah. it's an mm-hmm. exceedingly problematic play. But like anything, it ages poorly. But it's cute and don't read into it. <laughs> it starts as traumatically as every Pixar movie yeah. does. What and, I think is yes. so funny, uh-huh. and I told you this, what I think is so funny is that the government was doing nothing to help the orphanage the whole time. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Sure. What that story tells the story of, what Annie, the the play of Annie tells the story that the federal government will help poor people when it helps rich people. Mm. So the federal government gets involved when Daddy Warbucks wants an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> and the President of the United States sends out every FBI. bit of resources mm-hmm. that the President has. The yep. CIA, the FBI, the press, they're doing r- radio shows, find Annie's parents. Yep. They're doing background checks. They're checking signatures. They're seeing that a thing's forged mm-hmm. all to help one good donor. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Which so that and I guess those the, are the strings that can be pulled. If you're poor, you just have to be charming. That's the lesson yeah. of Annie. Mm-hmm. If you are cute and charming and can be optimistic and a little... A little, know, a little mm-hmm. sassy, mm-hmm. and that's your only hope. Worked for her. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, great show. Mm-hmm. So fun. Mm-hmm. So it's fun a, that it's our It's a good kids. show for um, kids because you got the orphans. Yeah. Um, and then- It's a funny experience as a dad when your child comes home thrilled i'm an orphan yeah what yeah, oh the play yeah, i forgot life. you auditioned yeah um hard knock life steals the show mm-hmm. it's so sassy and i think it's so uh, good. you're never fully dressed without a smile that's a good one too mid compared they're all mid okay. they're all fine yeah you're right that song got sampled in like rap songs and stuff oh yeah yeah dude stop no i'm hard knock life got sampled i in know rap, so. yeah, yeah, I, yeah that's what i was saying okay dude you're, stop. you're dead you're dead 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 uh, dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Mm. Melissa just fell asleep mid podcast. Sorry, <laughs> I give up. Sorry, we lost you, uh, Melissa, mid pod. <laughs> I can't believe the, the. I am so blown away. Like I've been in youth sports. That's the world I know. I know the youth sports world. Yeah, and I'm here to tell mm-hmm. you, youth theater is so much more complicated to execute. Oh, all the quick changes and costumes, props, yeah. sets, more practices, um, more rehearsals, more. Our daughter, our daughter started rehearsing. She tried. She auditioned in August. Mm-hmm. She started rehearsals mid October. Right. Eight to eleven every Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, three to four days a week she was rehearsing. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a full kick line with all the orphans. Mm-hmm. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So, yeah. I don't know. Get your kids in theater. They won't get bullied anymore, is what I'm saying. <laughs> is that true? I don't know if that's true well, in the schools Well, bullying has themselves. changed. Oh, yeah? Bullying is now digital. Mm. I mean, it's still it's still at school, too, but there's new layers of oh, bullying. Yeah? Yes. Yes, it's like, it's like someone will be in a group text, and then they'll start a group text with everyone but one person. Yeah, and then yeah, they start yeah. making fun of that person on the mm-hmm. on the other group text yeah. and you're like oh that is so specifically mm-hmm. mean yeah you know the only equivalent we had to that is when three-way, three-way calling call. and you didn't know somebody else yeah. was on the line and then they baited you to talk bad about yeah, yeah the yeah. third person then everyone hates so you mean. yeah so mean. yeah so what do you but think, uh, what do you think teens have to be mean what uh what psychologically is going in there insecurity or boredom hmm Right? No, expand. I want to hear more on that. Any insecurity? No, I think you're just. Well, usually meanness is because you hate yourself or you're insecure. Well, you're just like, um, I'm not as tall as X. I'm not as hot as this person. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at reading or I'm bad at public speaking right. or I don't have a nice car yeah. or mm, I hate my brother yeah. or, you know. Because of, um, because of the nature of schooling in those years. Everything that you do is on display. 
your mm -hmm. academic level, your looks, your fashion, your athletic level, because you have an, people know your scores, they know your classes, they know your athletic ability, they know how you dress, your friends, they know like at yeah. like a lot of jobs, people mm -hmm. don't jobs people don't even really know anything about you. They just know how you are at work. They don't even know, like, how you dress. They don't know any, yeah. they like, oh, you know, like, they don't know about all, you know so much about each other yeah. in school. Yeah. Well, because it's like prison. It yeah. is and like every, prison. Everyone's just looking for power. Not even in prison, at least pri mm -hmm. in prison, they all wear the same uniform. And there's no, yeah. and there's no socio, I mean, there is a socioeconomic s status, but, like, not in the sense of, like, Oh, you're poor and you're rich. Like that's like that's the other thing in school. Teenage mm -hmm. is so it's so hard because if there is something that someone can make you feel bad about, they will. Mm -hmm. Well, our our kids go to a 600 class high school. Mm -hmm. So where you're gonna fall amongst your 600 freshman classmates? Right. Um. Yeah. You're like, oh yep. yeah. There's gonna be so many yeah. that are. I'll tell you where I would have been. Right in between 250 and 400, somewhere <laughs> right around there. Just hey, got some good grades. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just I think also you've known someone. Some of the kids have known each other since kindergarten, yeah, or yeah. preschool, and so you have this history and these stereotypes. Yeah. that kind of get locked into. Well, and... I think that this a uh, kind of full circle it back to this is part of the reason that. I'm very grateful that our daughter is in a uh, theater community because it is a it's a group. You just when you're a parent, you just want you don't I don't want my kids to be maybe this is different with like modern parenting from what our parents. Mm -hmm. I don't want my kids to be I uh, my priority is not for my kids to be like smart, athletic or popular. I just want them to be happy with a group of friends. In a safe group of or friends. Or just to have a fairly decent group of friends. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. No, that was... Of good, supportive friends that are kind and loving to you. That's what I want. Because high school can be... Because there is that stereotype of people who peak in high school. and But those were their best years imaginable. But people around them are having terrible years. Not even just high yeah. school. All throughout mm -hmm. school. That can be miserable. So, like... When you move uh, or you start at a new school, like yeah. when you go from elementary to middle school, like the first like birthday party yeah. you get invited to, you're yeah. like, yes. yes. Like, yeah, well, you move so much, yeah. Or just first event. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my gosh, I got included in yeah. something. You know? Um, Military kids are so tough and adaptable because <laughs> of the movie <laughs> and because the mom or dad might be gone for a while. Is it good for them? No. But you are tough <laughs> because of it. I mean, your ability to Resilient? like. I don't know. There's, there's a, there's know. a scene in every teen movie where someone mm. awkwardly has to go the through lunch the lunch tray. Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Military kids have to do that every couple of months. Every couple of years, they're moving to yeah. a new place, mm -hmm. and not just like I went to a new high school down the road. Yeah. You went from mm -hmm. Japan to Texas to Seattle. Yeah. That's crazy. By the California. way, of those three places, Japan and Seattle are more alike than Texas and Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about culture yeah. shift. And mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. just rolled in eighth grade, height of security. Oof. You never feel better about yourself and your body and who you are yeah. than at 14. It's so rough. It's tough, rough. adaptable mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a sacrifice for... The soldier, the enlistee, but it's a mm -hmm. huge sacrifice for the family. The system is yeah. so hard. Well, people like to like, you can do the the cute thing and be like, military families get connected fast because they have to. Right. You know, and you're like, awesome, cool. <laughs> 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 they go deep quick. Yeah. You know, and you're like, great. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know. I don't. What do I have to say about this? Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. What I don't do even I remember how I got into camera. military kids. But um, the point being, we yeah. like you just want your kids to uh, thrive. to thrive. And yeah. but our goals is like modern parents have changed. Like it's socially, you just because you know 
you have you've seen enough data that you're like, of course, mm-hmm. I want you to go to school. I want you to go to college. It's going to help you. You know, like I want all of those things. But we just know in this like modern era, there's so many different routes that you can go and so many different mm-hmm. ways of finding your thing that I want. I was talking to Joel about this yesterday. I haven't told you this. Day. We were walking through and. I was like, I drove them because we had to use the car. Yeah. And I dropped mm-hmm. them off. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, gosh, I haven't been doing this in a while. And I dropped yeah. them off in the student light at his mm-hmm. high, high school. And I was like, and I was just like, gosh, I can't believe you're about to go into your senior year. And I told yeah. him, I was like, this mm-hmm. flew by. Mm-hmm. This flew by. M- yeah. Faster than any other season season mm-hmm. I can remember. My son's high school years yeah. went, they're gone. And I, it's in part because you don't see them nearly as much. Yeah. That the days don't mm-hmm. feel as long because now they're independent and they have their yeah. own car and they have their mm-hmm. after school activities. And on Fridays, they come home at 10 or 11 and you yeah. just you don't see them nearly as much. So the days don't feel nearly as long. Like that same four years in our 10 year old's life felt much longer mm-hmm. than they did in mm-hmm. his life. And then he goes, I know I can't think about it without getting sad. Oh. You know, <laughs> but it made me grateful that that man, he had a good, he's had a good high school experience Yeah, because he told mm-hmm. me his friends, he has multiple friends who are just like, I can't wait for high school to be over. I hate it here. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the that's dichotomy. That's true too. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, theater is great because they learn how to public speak. Valuable. Um, and like learn um what i mean is like memorize lines and choreography and blocking right. um i think all that stuff's super valuable but also it's blocking well like on stage <laughs> sorry okay but here's what i'm gonna sorry, say blocking was just so specific uh, yeah well just like where to Tap. be no it's like posture and yeah you know blocking is i know blocking. Uh, i know okay um but what i was gonna say is just like sports they're learning how to operate under pressure yes and stress, but like yeah. it's like a good stress. Yeah, that's true. You know, like because they're tired and they want to sit down. Yeah, they got to do the run through. And... Also, being introduced to a little hierarchy is not a bad thing. And the lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, um, someone else getting a role is mm-hmm. tra- auditioning for a part you don't get. Yeah, that's very helpful in mm-hmm. life. Um, and then for them to go, no, I probably do need to work harder. Yep. If I want this role right you know like that's those are good life skills to yeah. learn 100 percent. yeah mm-hmm. i think that uh and then like learning to exist in like a, a big ecosystem like that and to yeah. kind of find your place well really they valuable do, they do directors do a lot of like grounding techniques mm-hmm. you know like breathing and vocal warm-ups and right. they're like you'll never have this show again in this yeah. way and with this group they do a lot of like gratitude circles. Yeah. It's very positive. You know what the closest equivalent that I can think of it is to is youth group. <laughs> <laughs> and that you have this like whole other syst- ecosystem, mm-hmm. this whole other group of place that you exist. Yeah. And it's nothing mm-hmm. like where you're at in this in school. Like, a, you know, yeah. especially when you're in a theater company that's outside of your school. Like, maybe there's a couple friends, but you're like, oh, I got this whole other thing over here. I got a different ranking over here socially. <laughs> I'm like a lead over here, or I'm in the worship band, or I'm I'm like, maybe I'm kind of lame at school, but I'm kind of popular at high, here. Or like, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm like straight edge in high school, but I'm kind of a bad boy in youth group. All <laughs> yeah. your yeah. ego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, interesting that you can be a certain age and have a total different, you know, status somewhere outside of because it is not an yeah. even playing well, field. Well, that, there. Um, especially in middle school, people will say it's good to have a group um, outside of school. Right. 100%. So, like, um, it takes less pressure off of school. If you like have a Girl Scout troop that's not at the school mm-hmm. or what youth group, whatever, like, it's yeah. a. Even if you're having tons of turmoil and fighting at yeah. your school, then you can have another group that's separate. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's like Claire has a friend who doesn't go to her school anymore. Mm-hmm. But they can hang out and not even have to worry about school dynamics. 100%. Yeah. You know, she's just kind of like a neighborhood friend. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that makes it like very neutral mm-hmm. in the sense they can just hang out. What we're saying is your kid has to be a Christian or a theater kid. Those are the options. <laughs> One or the other, <laughs> baptized in the water or on in the play. One, 
<laughs> crucifix or crucible. I don't know. I was trying yes, to figure out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> if, you, if you can get both somehow in there. Oh, they a little are. Technicolor dream code or something. Oh, my God. And we all know a theater a theater Christian kid has got uh, two different oh, worlds they, they live in. They got. Um, There's a lot of crossover, actually. Theater Christian churches, groups. Well, churches love a big theatrical production. Yeah. Love a big one. Some do. Especially around yeah. the. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Some churches are real. Theater churches, arts, performing arts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you remember that when, uh, like, yeah, when you're reading our first, you my read, first church that uh, I went to was that. You way. read like the Easter text. Yeah, and you're like, no, I am a Pontius Pilate right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. There's a <laughs> yeah. I watched one of them married. Did you know? And she like swooped her hands below her legs to pull the baby yeah. out like above her head. <laughs> oh my gosh. Incredible. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, our, the first church that we went to, the, that I ever went to in, in, in south of Seattle in Federal Way was one that was kind of that older kind of Gen that X boomer. It, Palm it, Sunday. Had they a, had palms. Well, yeah. that, no, <laughs> Melissa, there was a donkey one week and uh-huh. I had for palms for a good Friday. Or no, for Palm Sunday, you know, and I did not know why there was a donkey in church because I didn't know enough about the Bible at that point Mm -hmm. that this was a reenactment of Christ coming into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And I was just like, there's a donkey here, a real donkey. I think we had a camel for Christmas. We had a Christmas camel one year. I think so. Yeah. Now, Mm -hmm. after that, we did not go into any more theater churches, but not by choice. But it was a specific genre of church. Yeah. Were you ever in a theater church, a church that loved a good mm-hmm. play? Yeah, my grandma, um, in, in a couple different versions, but my grandma at her Methodist church always had a Christmas reenactment that was like all the different characters walked down the middle and came on stage and essentially became the, like yeah. the manger scene. What's it? Living yeah. nativity. Yeah. It was a, the, yeah, it was like a or living, the, nativity, living Christmas tree, but yeah. Animals, the whole thing. Yeah. 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 And then mm-hmm. another church I worked for like had a whole, their entire campus. Yeah. Yeah. They made it like Production. you were walking through a little Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And so that was like a whole thing. Oh, the certain churches. Yeah, yeah the first it. church mm-hmm. that we went to was a real theater church. And then after that, we went to Mars Hill where we were all puppets. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little different. Yeah. That's a good ending. Mm-hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, folks, we want to give a special shout out to our as essential as oils patrons. Those are the top tier, baby. Mm-hmm. The best of the best, the $25 a month and up patrons. So sh- thank you so much for supporting the podcast. We love you and appreciate you so much. First off, Avril Griffiths. Adam Bush. Allison Nelson. Bonnie Galindo. Brandon Schoenberger. Carrie Teague. Christopher Finlan. Code to Grow. Courtney Eibling. Damaris Diaz-Stevens. Daniel Owens. Dave and Melissa Cox. Dave Hoagland. Dustin Daly. Jason and Francis White. Jessica Hanharan. Joshua and Nikki Platt. Jordan Cowan. Juliana Smith. Lori Amos. Matt and Sam Slosdom. Michelle Calson. Nathan and Jennifer Merritt. Nicole Carose. Rachel Wilson. Robert and Nellie K. Penn. Rachel Kennedy. Steven Mina. Tiffany Payne. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much for your support. Bye. Bye.